Davina's meeting English heritage historian Stephen Brindle in the heart of Bedborough's development. It's really lovely. It is lovely, isn't, isn't it? it? It's so beautiful. It is. Well, he was a really good builder who really knew what he was doing. He's an ancestor to be proud of. He's the sort of man who'd have got oh. up at dawn six days a week, worked 14 to 16 hour days. Um, that generation who built Britain, Britain of the Industrial Revolution. We've got his obituary, yeah. and you can find out lots more about him here. Wow! There's... Look at that obituary! Well, they thought very highly of him. So he died in 1860, in his 73rd year, Aldman and Magistrate. Yeah. So he was a magistrate. Uh, well, he'd be mayor. I can't, he can't have been mayor. Well, he was. Um, he was mayor of Windsor. He, he made himself a big man round here. Steve he was mayor of Windsor. Oh, yeah. Although the symptoms of declining health had become painfully apparent in his countenance for some time past, Mr. Bedborough continued to attend to his magistrate's business. He was a legend, wasn't he? So he was sick mm -hmm. and he still went to work. Yeah. United to a wife of a most amiable and, and engaging <laughs> disposition. Um, one whose character was well calculated to cheer and sustain a young tradesman in his progress through the thorny path of life. Isn't, Isn't it lovely? beautifully written? This lady predeceased her husband by several years, leaving behind her large family. Nearly all his speculations at this period proved eminently successful, and he was now the largest house proprietor within the borough. He proved himself as a reliable and excellent craftsman, yes. I would guess. Yes. And he'd have got a very good reputation in this quite small community. And as he worked his way up, he'd have made connections in the town's professional classes, and those connections then would really have helped him as he as he built his his business. Fantastic. Absolutely. I was very worried that he'd been underhand and devious. And uh, no, I'm so pleased that he was. He sounds. He sounds as lovely as I dreamt he would be. Yes, I'm sure he was. I've seen something else very exciting. Mr. Bedborough became the purchaser of 20 acres of land in Upton. He built Upton Park. It's fantastic. <laughs> In a funny kind of way, I don't want him to have been a relation to George IV and to have been given a leg up. I want to keep this image in my head of a great man of industry and actually how much more meaning that has to me than being related to a royal, being related to somebody who did have ambition, but not that sort of ruthless ambition where you'd tread on someone's head to get further, but the sort that, the, the sort of ambition that I admire the sort of ambition that drives you to do the best that you possibly can. It'd be lovely to see if there were any records that could actually tell us a bit more about what he was like. I mean, that's what I'm sort of interested in, the personal stories behind the man. <gasps> oh, no. Um, it says here, dreadful suicide at Upton Park. George Bedborough, JT's son, shot himself through the heart. And they found him in a, in a pond. That's unbelievably sad. Just trying to work out times, because 1865... I think, was, was he alive still? He wasn't, was he? JT died. But not, not long before, was it? Because he died in 1860. So it's about five years after his father's death. And he'd been very strange in his demeanor of late, more particularly whenever the subject of his late father's property had been mentioned. He says, they've done me out of the land and the houses in Upton Park. Well, this isn't at all what I was expecting to find. John Bedborough. I reside at Windsor. The deceased is my brother. He was in his 52nd year. He had the management of the Upton Park estate. He had said to me these last four years past that he was afraid he should lose his senses, so he clearly was kind of worried about his mental health. And he was really disappointed at the result of his father's will, and I think that's kind of the thing that sent him over the edge. So Upton Park caused someone's death. That's really sad. <laughs>